Rabies is a viral infection that attacks the cerebral spinal fluid and um, the brain of an animal or a human. Rabies, when symptoms begins, almost is always fatal. So it's very important to get treatment. In the United States, rabies is mostly spread by wild animals such as raccoons, skunks, foxes, and bats. Though it's rare in the United States, domestic animals can spread rabies. Rabies is transmitted in um, either bite wounds or through indirect contact with either scratches or with mucous membranes of the um, eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Um, this contact, like I said, can be indirect or it can be direct, so it's not just from bite exposures where we need to be concerned. The symptoms of rabies normally start out with lethargy and fever and nausea, vomiting in animals. This progresses to an unsteady gait. It can cause seizures. It can cause foaming at the mouth, which is um, related to excessive salivation uh, and a difficulty um, in swallowing. Also, uh, difficulty in breathing is very common in animals. It, um, it's important to realize though that though it's commonly regarded that animals who are rabid foam at the mouth, not all rabid animals do foam at the mouth and not all animals that foam at the mouth actually are rabid. So certain diseases like distemper can also cause that presentation. Though rabies is a fatal disease, rabies is preventable. It's important to get prompt treatment if you are bitten or if your animal is bitten. So if you're bitten or an animal is bitten, you want to make sure that you thoroughly wash the wound and also you want to seek out medical attention to determine whether or not you need post-exposure prophylaxis. Now it's commonly thought of that post-exposure prophylaxis requires shots in the abdomen. There's been a lot of progress in this area over the past 10 years and that's no longer required. What will actually happen is you'll be given a series of shots around the wound sites. These are very small shots. It's called RIG. It prevents the infection from moving. And then you'll be given four shots uh, over 14 days, which resemble the kind of shot you would get for a flu shot. If your domestic animal is exposed to a bite, or exposed to wildlife in an unknown capacity. It's important that this is reported to animal control and to the local health department. It's also important that you seek veterinary care for your animal. The health department regularly receives reports of bad exposures or possible bad exposures. Because bats have such small teeth, it's impossible sometimes to tell if you've been bitten. If you were asleep at the time or if the bat was found in a room with a small child or with an animal, treatment will likely be initiated unless the animal is available for testing. Since rabies is almost always fatal, it's important that timely treatment is initiated if exposure occurs and you undertake prevention techniques. One of the most important things that you can do is get your animal vaccinated. Additionally, as a person, you can greatly reduce your chances of rabies exposure by making sure that you don't interact with animals that you don't know. If an animal is in distress, please contact a approved wildlife rehabilitator. And always remember, if you have questions or you think you've possibly been exposed, please contact the health department. You can contact the Division of Environmental Health by contacting our phone number 301-609-6751. Help keep your family and community protected. An annual seasonal flu vaccine is the best way to help protect against the flu. Skip the line at your local pharmacy and get your flu shot at the Charles County Department of Health, where drive through flu shots are being conducted. To find out more, head to charlescountyhealth.org. Hi, I'm Terry Bell Harris with According to the Word Church over here in La Plata at the Willing Helpers Hall. I want to thank the Charles County Department of Health for providing support and financial aid through the Charles County Cares Act grant, which helps underserved families in our community during this pandemic. Thank you so much. My name is Jarrington Baysmore, and I'm Inspection Supervisor for under the Planning and Growth Management Department, Coast Permanent Inspection Services Division. And my primary disciplines are the Nuisance Code and the Zoning Ordinance. A nuisance 
is classified per Webster as anything that can cause disruption to anybody's livelihood or anything that could just be classified as a disruption in the normal walks of life. In this case, we're referencing on residential properties the various violations that constitute a public nuisance. For example, if a property contains tall grass and tall weeds, overgrown shrubberies and bushes, and uh, the most obvious one of all, trash and debris throughout the property uh, that will accumulate any types of insects or rodents. For us, uh, Coast Permits Inspection Services, uh, we focus solely on residential properties. And our job on a day-to-day -day basis is we receive a complaint and we will go out and verify that the complaints are valid according to our code. We have various types of violations listed and uh, we will check to see if the complainant's complaint is of validity or not by conducting an uh, initial investigation. If it comes to find out that these violations and others do exist, then we'll move forward and create a case and try our best to make contact with the property owners via the methods of uh, postal mail and posting the property with our documentation, letting the property owner know that we have observed violations, nuisance violations on their property, and that they need to address them in a timely fashion. You can file a complaint anytime when you see a, or you think you see a violation on a person's property. From there, we will be in receipt of the uh, complaint and that's when an inspector will go out to verify if it's a valid complaint or not. You will go to our website, then uh, the Charles County website, and then you will uh, go through the links to go through the plan and growth management, and then uh, Coast Permits Inspection Services. And then on that, once you get to that link, there is a report of property or structure complaint. That's which will directly come to us, and we will come out and verify that the violations exist. We are not here to have that iron fist and, 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 and tell you all how to keep your property in a certain condition. But we are here to notify you when there are violations that exist that could potentially generate situations such as excessive rodents in a community or in a certain section. But in order for you to try to minimize this, uh, we just want to let you know about your violations and give you the time that it takes to uh, get into compliance. If additional timing is needed, we have no problems working with you and we will work with you. But as long as you show that the communication is effective and thorough, uh, we will work with you until it gets to abatement. Applying for jobs with Charles County government is now easier and more efficient. Visit www.charlescountymd.gov for more information.